Hello, I'm Dave Ortega from Somerville Media Center, and this is Somerville Neighborhood News. Today we're talking about traffic safety and pedestrian safety in Somerville, which has come into the limelight, especially after a traffic fatality this past July uh, in East Somerville. With me now in the studio are uh, two wonderful guests to talk about this. Uh, we have State Representative Mike Connolly, who represents the 26th Middlesex, Middlesex District. Welcome to you. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. And we have Jen Atwood, who is the director of East Somerville Main Streets. Welcome to you. Thanks for having me. Now, Jen, um, why don't we talk about the community impact, the impact on the community uh, with this event in July, this unfortunate tragic event in July, and what the community is asking for at this particular intersection. Um, it's, a, it's a traffic crossing that connects a lot of Somerville neighborhoods with Assembly Row um, and with Ten Hills, um, and it crosses 93 and uh, a part of um, Route 28, I believe, as well. So it's very busy uh, for traffic and, uh, traffic and pedestrians alike. Um, so what, it, what is the community impact? Um, well, the community was really shocked and taken back, um, but not surprised because it's a well-known dangerous intersection. And um, the community has been advocating for improvements in this particular intersection for years now. Um, the particular where the actual location of where it happened was just outside the stop and shop on Mystic Ave, um, which is a popular, very common corridor for neighborhoods, like you said, connecting between East Somerville and Assembly. They walk across Mystic um, and under 93, and then they have to cross another um, Mystic on coming um, outbound on the other side to get to Assembly. and. She was uh, struck in the intersection on the crosswalk um, w with the inbound traffic, which is often missing that red light when there's a crossing there. Um, since the accident, um, the community has been placing flowers at the site of the accident in response. Um, but I feel like the community overall has been largely dismayed by the lack of response that they've seen um, in terms of like city statements or um, a statement from the state um, regarding this particular intersection is known to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. And what, what sort of response are they, they looking for? A, a statement, just some sort of acknowledgement? Acknowledgement, I mean, um, if you compare this between the um, bicyclist that was hit in West Somerville there was a huge public outcry. The city responded immediately with public statement. Um, there's still memorial out there to this day, um, and that happened months and months ago. And um, it felt like the response, by comparison, was like nothing. Um, and I think a lot of the community members felt really upset. I know they feel upset about that. Um, and we just like to have someone say that they're committed to making these changes that are needed for this community to make it safer. Mm -hmm. um, and I can talk to you a little bit about what's been proposed, if that might be helpful. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm coming in as a new director, so um, I'm kind of halfway through some of the advocacy that's been already been happening for years. But um, from what I hear, that the suggestion has largely been to narrow the lanes of traffic that a pedestrian would have to cross. Um, it's such a, a odd intersection because there's on-ramps to 93 on one side and off-ramps on the other side, plus it's Mystic, which is already a busy road, mm -hmm. and the McGrath intersection coming um, turn onto that. So the fastest, cheapest way to like make an improvement would be to narrow this. Um, I mean, right now it's like a 45 foot wide lane um, with two lanes of traffic and the highway standard should call for 11, 11 foot. So it's already known to be much wider of a passage than necessary mm -hmm. or recommended. So that would be like the number one thing that the community would like to see happening sooner rather than later. And also possibly making it more prominent. Yeah, so another thing that's um, been suggested is to um, change the lighting up a little bit to make that stop a little bit more obvious. Um, I know when I've gone down there, um, several cars will blow through that red light. They just don't see it. I think partially is because it's too high. 
Um, so one recommendation is to bring that stop lower um, or maybe additional lighting lower at ground level um, and possibly with some flashing lights just because it's a known dangerous spot that people often overlook. And so, Mike, um, we turn to you now. Um, on the state and local level, what sort of uh, changes might be taking place uh, in light of this recent f uh, traffic fatality? Well, um, yeah, first let me say, of course, you know, it, it, is, it is tragic and, and it's heartbreaking um, to lose uh, any Somerville resident uh, as a victim of this, well, what appears to be a hit and run. Um, and it's particularly heartbreaking, I think, for all of us uh, in government because this has been an area where we've actually focused a pretty good deal of attention over the past few years. I'm now uh, serving, this is my third year, I'm in the middle of my second term as state rep, and so one of the first things I did uh, after I got elected was I organized a walk and actually brought uh, Mass DOT officials, brought City of Somerville officials, um, helped organize it with uh, Councilor Matt McLaughlin. And we brought MassDOT to this intersection um, and showed them uh, some of the concerns. And we were, you know, for a while pretty encouraged and hopeful that we had turned the corner and were making progress. So one of the things that had happened um, about a year and a half ago or so was uh, those hawk signals, which are those signals where when you hit the button, um, three different red lights uh, immediately pop up. Um, we had several of those hawk signals installed right at this intersection. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly um, the intersection has been improving, but clearly, you know, this latest tragedy just reminds us that more work needs to be done. And so um, I was in touch with uh, MassDOT officials um, within hours of uh, the uh, terrible event that occurred last month. Mm -hmm. um, I got to speak to uh, Secretary Pollock at MassDOT and she committed to me that, that MassDOT would move quickly on making uh, further improvements. And so I actually spoke with uh, MassDOT this morning. I wanted to get an update before coming here. Uh, they said that improvements are in the works and that they will be calling a public meeting to um, show folks, you know, additional improvements. And as Jen indicated, um, it is, it, it, it's such a challenging intersection because I think, you know, in the minds of automobile operators, you know, I think some of them think I'm on my way to get onto I-93. They look at it almost as a runway. Um, to approach I-93, but of course it's, uh, you know, it's a major pedestrian crossing. So uh, about a week after the um, tragic hit and run, I went up there myself. I spent about an hour um, just watching the intersection. I, I went up there around 7 o'clock on a, on a weeknight, um, and I was struck by, you know, how many pedestrians were crossing and also the fact that there are automobiles that do ignore those red lights even when a uh, pedestrian you know, activates the hawk signal. Um, some cars will just continue going. Um, sometimes pedestrians um, might you know, just try to chance it and not uh, do the hawk signal. So I think there can be better signage to show people where to hit the hawk signal button. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know, Jen uh, mentioned some good suggestions that uh, I'm sure we're going to be reiterating to MassDOT around, you know, whether or not those signals are placed right. Um, but it is certainly, um, you know, a real tragedy anytime yeah. uh, a pedestrian is killed, particularly in this case where, um, you know, the pedestrian was in the crosswalk and certainly it seems as if, um, you know, a pretty serious crime was probably uh, committed by this driver mm. um, in the hit and run. Mm. And it, you mentioned the data collection that you did kind of unofficially, unscientifically on your own. Um, do you know of any data collection that's going on uh, by MassDOT or any other state entities uh, to count how many pedestrians there might be uh, during any given part of the day, as well as uh, just to observe what the traffic is actually doing um, in, a, in any sort of official capacity? 
It's a good question. I'm not, uh, I'm not aware of whether or not they have recent data, but that's certainly something um, as this public meeting uh, gets scheduled. Um, I think it's something we can raise with them and, and find out, you know, what data they're working with. But, you know, I think the, the positive update would be to say that they are actively uh, preparing uh, to engage with the community and, and work on solutions mm. to make this, you know, crossing even safer. I believe Mark Chase has, um, with his students, uh, looked into this particular intersection. So there has been studies done in the past a lot of um, like how often traffic goes through the intersection and how many pedestrians are using the hawk or not using the hawk. Mm -hmm. um, so there has been some study um, from the community. And it was an existing intersection uh, before the Assembly Road development. So is that is that correct to say? I believe so. I think you would be able to answer that better than me. Yeah, my understanding is, you know, it's been a crossing for a while. It, it's known as the Kensington Underpass. Okay. Um, obviously, now that Assembly Row is becoming more and more of a, you know, intensified development mm -hmm. use, I think the need for further attention is so important. And, uh, you know, again, it's it's so heartbreaking because it's been an area where um, a lot of resources have been deployed. Uh, I've had, I've now participated in three state budgets mm -hmm. um, and in two of those budgets, uh, I was working alongside Senator Jalen, we were able to get money into the state budget to bring improvements uh, to the Kensington underpass. So uh, one of the earliest aspects of that was uh, new lighting has been installed in the uh, underpass area. So um, so certainly it's very important, I think, to try to bring more attention to the area. And you know, one of the, one of the tough things that I noticed when I went up there a couple weeks ago was how um, when you're in that inside lane and, and where this accident happened, there's actually uh, a sort of a smaller uh, crosswalk and then a, a larger crosswalk and they're both headed in the same direction. Right. And uh, from what I can tell, it looks like it actually happened in the more narrow crosswalk, although, you know, as I think it may have been mentioned, it's still being investigated, so we're trying to get all the details uh, confirmed. But in that narrower crosswalk, it's, it's almost as if there's like a wall and then there's a space where the pedestrians appear. There's like a fence that creates a wall. And so I think the challenge there, I, I can imagine as a driver is, you're not sort of seeing on the side the pedestrians kind of you know grouping up waiting for the crosswalk so perhaps one of the answers could be to try to create more visual awareness that you know this isn't a runway onto the highway this is actually a crosswalk yeah so if if people look at this and see that even one of the possibilities might be closing this off to pedestrians and that, that that might be the safest route. Do you think that that might even be a possibility? I don't think that's a viable solution yeah. at this point. Um, I mean, if you look at the history of 93 being built and how the community kind of came out against that and like historically across the nation, how it segregates communities by having something that crosses and like separates communities. So I think by effectively making that into a wall would not be an ideal situation. That crossing needs to be available and open to pedestrians and to everyone to be able to cross neighborhoods. Yeah, I would agree and I would add that, yeah, I think we need to, you know, take further action to put uh, pedestrians on the same, you know, uh, the same value that we provide to automobiles because clearly, you know, that highway was built with the intent of prioritizing the throughput of automobiles, um, but clearly, you know, with the development of Assembly Row, um, this is now a major pedestrian crossing, and it is. Um, you know, I would agree. I, I don't see any other alternative to having a crossing, but this, you know, at present, the geography and, and the layout uh, is really problematic, and so we're going to have to continue uh, working to improve it. Rather than completely shutting it down to pedestrians, there might be some more expensive but longer term solutions, maybe raising the pedestrian crossing 
um, moving the on-ramp or off-ramp. Um, those were bigger infrastructure pieces that likely wouldn't would take a lot more work to happen. But um, I would I would rather argue for something like that than closing the the pedestrian through through sure. fare. And um, have you heard any commitments from Assembly Row or, or Frit about uh, anything that I, that they would commit to towards any positive change? I believe they already have actually committed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and the Hawks uh, signals that um, Rep Connolly was, was mentioning, I believe um, that they were one of the in investors in that piece. Mm -hmm. um, they've also like been focusing more on the Lombardi underpass uh, area and put a lot of funding behind making that like a nicer looking area. But um, so I think right now it really, in terms of infrastructure improvements need to be prioritized and we're looking to the state for answers for that. Yeah, I would agree. And again, uh, that's the latest as of today. Uh, in, co in consultation with MassDOT, they're planning to uh, do a, a, a local meeting where they will talk about um, solutions and gather feedback from people, um, which I certainly take as an encouraging sign. I know um, it, 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 it's hard to not have an immediate response, but to see the state mobilize um, you know, within a matter of days to weeks, I think is a, is a, good, is a good start for the state. And, um, I'll certainly be continuing to push them to follow through on the on those commitments and uh, to take further action. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing uh, when that uh, public meeting will be on the schedule, and we'll definitely keep people abreast of that. Um, I want to thank you both for for coming in today, Representative Mike Connolly. Uh, thanks for coming in, and Jen Atwood of East Somerville Main Streets. Thank you. Thank you for having me.